Good morning, everyone at Tushita and online. Welcome to this morning meditation. Good morning, welcome. Please uh, take one of these seats because we'll use a prayer book as well. <laughs> So we will start by establishing a Mahayana motivation for this session. We can establish a Mahayana session for our day, and for the week. So just, just think for a few seconds how all sentient beings, just like myself, are trapped in the vicious prison of the mind, the vicious prison of psychic existence. Since beginningless time, now I have this precious human rebirth. I'm so fortunate I have met the teachings of the Buddha. Therefore, I'm taking responsibility I will study, I will meditate, I will transform my mind, I will become pure love, pure compassion, pure wisdom, and pure power to help others. May I become a Buddha to benefit all my dear mother sentient beings. Try to give rise to this extra extraordinary mind of bodhicitta. May I become a Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. With this in mind, we will start with a few minutes of um, calm abiding meditation, single pointed meditation, shamatha. This I will quickly remind you of the uh, posture, the sevenfold posture. First, the, the most important thing is that your back is straight, your spine is straight. Whether you are sitting on the floor, which is ideal, or on a chair, make sure that your spine is straight. Then ideally, your legs would be in a full lotus posture. If that is not possible, you can sit in half lotus or simply cross your legs. Make sure you are comfortable, you are not forcing yourself. Then the hands in the concentration mudra, with the right hand on the left and the thumbs slightly touching, and this rests on your lap. Again, the back is straight, that's the most important thing. Your shoulders slightly pulled back and relaxed. Your neck aligned with the spine and the chin slightly going downwards. Then a tip from the ancient masters is to put the tip of your tongue towards the upper palate behind the teeth, the upper teeth, in order to reduce production of saliva. And finally, the eyes should not be closed. They should be slightly opened. It is the mind that meditates, the mental consciousness. So basically, you are resting your gaze one or two meters in front of you. But you are not paying attention to what your, your eyes are apprehending. The object of your meditation is a mental object. So you can bring any object to mind that you are used to meditate on for calm abiding, single pointed meditation. If you don't have an object that you're familiar with, you can visualize a tiny drop of white light between your nose and your upper lip. So in this area, you can touch this area if it helps to uh, 
no work, place your attention. But we are not placing our attention on the body part as such. We are placing our attention on this mental object that is a tiny drop of white light. And the purpose of the meditation is to keep all our attention there, to keep all our focus there without losing the object. So of course, if we are not used to meditate on a single object, we will lose our object very frequently. So there are two things that might happen. One is excitement. Our mind will start thinking about other things. What am I going to eat for lunch? What did I do last night? And so on and so forth. Or your mind might fall into dullness, into laxity. You might start falling asleep. So it is very important to apply the two antidotes, introspection and mindfulness. Introspection, you should always have a part of your mind checking, am I meditating? Am I still concentrated on my object of meditation? If not, as soon as I notice that I'm not focused on my object anymore, then with mindfulness, I immediately come back to the object. And I make sure that my mind stays there without forgetting the object. So we'll do this for about five minutes and the mind the mind might wander many, many times. That is not an issue. It just becomes an issue if we don't notice or if when we notice, we don't come back to the object. So as many times as necessary, we check, am I meditating? And if not, going back to the object. We'll try this for about five minutes.
gently come out of the meditation. Starting today and for the next few months, um, we'll be doing meditations on the whole graduated path to enlightenment, to the Lamrim in Tibetan. So uh, <clears throat> this week we will start with the very first chapter, which is Guru Devotion, how to rely on the spiritual guide, the virtuous spiritual guide. And uh, at the beginning of every meditation, we will read, um, we'll, we will recite a uh, Lamrim prayer composed by Lama Tsongkhapa, which is called the foundation of all good qualities. So I hope you can all see my screen. And uh, at Tushita, we have the prayer in front of us on page 139, if I'm not mistaken. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and venerable guru. Correct devotion to him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again, please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly, day and night, takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of black and white karma follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be careful, to abandon even the slightest negativities and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Seeking samsaric pleasures is the door to all suffering. They are uncertain and cannot be relied upon. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this pure thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great caution arise. The root of the teachings is keeping the Pratimoksha vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so I have all mother migratory beings. Please bless me to see this, train in supreme bodhicitta, and bear the responsibility of freeing migratory beings. Even if I develop only bodhicitta, but I don't practice the three types of morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the Bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I have specified distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyzed the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate quickly within my mind stream the unified path of calm abiding and special insight. Having become a pure vessel by training in a general path, Please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme Vajra vehicle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows in Samaya. As I have become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pleasures like my life. Then, having realized the importance of the two stages, the essence of the Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the holy Guru. Like that, may the gurus who showed a noble path and the spiritual friends who practice it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely all outer and inner hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent dharma. By completing the qualities of the stages and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajradhar. So this short prayer composed by Lama Tsongkhapa contains the whole graduated path to enlightenment in a very concise form. And so uh, we'll be meditating on all those points. This week, uh, we will do three meditations on Guru devotion. So today we will meditate on uh, the need for a Guru. Why do we need a Guru? And uh, what are the qualities that a guru uh, should have? Uh, then on Wednesday, we will meditate on the qualities that the disciple should have and uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the, the advantages of relying on a guru and the disadvantages of not relying on a guru. And then finally on Friday, we will see how to rely on a guru. So first, why do we need a virtuous spiritual friend? Why do we need a guru? 
even to learn ordinary things, for example, how to drive a car, how to use a computer, how to cook an egg, how to build a house and so forth. Even for such things, we need someone to teach us. And in order to go to a place where we have never been before, we need someone to show us the way. In the same way, in order to practice, in order to know how to practice the Dharma and to travel the path to liberation and the path to enlightenment, places we have never been before since beginningless lives, we definitely need a teacher. It is not enough to learn the Dharma from books. From books, we can get an inter intellectual understanding. But we need more than that. We need to attain actual realizations of the Dharma. In order to attain realizations, we need a qualified teacher. And also, we must rely on the teacher in a proper manner, in a proper way. So try to see for maybe one minute, try to conclude, why do I need a spiritual friend? I want to free myself from all mental obscurations. How can I do that? I need a teacher. A teacher who knows my mind to explain, to show the path, to show the way. Not only that, I want to free all sentient beings from the same mental obscurations. How can I become a Buddha in order to do that? I need the clear and mistaken instructions of a teacher. Now, not just any teacher, according to the ornament for the Mahayana Sutras by Arya Maitreya, there are 10 qualities for a Mahayana Guru to be a qualified Guru. The first quality is mind should be subdued or controlled through the practice of the higher training in morality, ethics. So ideally, a teacher living the vows of a monk. Then his mind should be pacified and undistracted to the higher training in concentration. Meaning that ideally your guru should have achieved karma abiding samatha then his mind should be thoroughly pacified through the higher training in wisdom the wisdom of emptiness selflessness meaning that ideally your guru should have realized emptiness, should be an Arya being. The fourth point is that the guru should have more knowledge than the disciple, greater knowledge. <clears throat> so ideally your guru should have studied extensively the teachings of the Buddha. The 
people who must have perseverance. Never giving up. You should have a wealth of scriptural knowledge. Ideally, your guru should have realized emptiness of all phenomena. Guru should have seen the nature of reality, experienced the nature of reality directly. Guru should be skilled in teaching the Dharma, expounding the teachings, making the teachings clear in an eloquent manner. The ninth quality to look for in a guru, he should have love and compassion. Wishing others to be happy, wishing others to be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. And finally, the tenth quality to look for in a guru, he should have abandoned discouragement and laziness in teaching the Dharma. He should be teaching the Dharma with great enthusiasm. Now, in those degenerated times, not so easy to find a guru with such qualities, all these 10 qualities. So Lama Tsongkhapa indicates that if we cannot find a guru with all of this, these 10 qualities, at least we should look for a guru who has five of those, meaning a guru whose mind is subdued with the three higher trainings of ethics, concentration, and wisdom. A guru who has love and compassion. And a guru who has a realization of emptiness. Even finding a guru with those five qualities in this day and age might be difficult. So Lama Tsongkhapa indicates that at least we should try to find a guru who has three qualities. He should have more qualities than faults. He should have more concern for others than for himself or herself. And he must have more concern for future lives than this present life. The late Gyabje Damas Barimpoche used to say that practicing the Dharma means thinking about, thinking beyond this life, thinking about future lives. Anything we do for this life only is a worldly activity, not a dharma practice. So if you are looking for a guru, at least he must have these three qualities. He must have more qualities than he has faults. He must have more concerns for others than for himself, and more concern for future lives than the present life. So to conclude this meditation, we will meditate for two minutes on the fact that in order to attain enlightenment, and even in order to obtain 
good future reports and in order to even achieve liberation from samsara we need to rely on a qualified spiritual teacher and we need to check carefully to make sure that the teacher is properly qualified before making the decision to rely upon him or her as our guru. So we can meditate on this for two minutes. Gently come out of the meditation. And then we will quickly dedicate the merits of these virtuous actions so that we may quickly become a Guru Buddha and lead all sentient beings without exception to that enlightened state. The supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not a reason arise and grow and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more due to the merits of these virtuous actions may there be no wars famines epidemics quarreling fighting may all sentient beings live in harmony, may peace prevail. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and have a beautiful day. <laughs>